Hello and welcome to another episode of Box Trek. I'm your host, Matt Brady. And guys, it is official. I've officially moved to Portland, where I've been talking about moving for, oh, about the past, like, year. Um, so I am here, and I am uh, settled. I'm starting work next week. So you should finally begin to uh, expect some more Box Trick posts on a regular basis now that I have everything pretty much settled and good to go. Well, um, let's go ahead and dive into the news. I have two kind of things I want to talk about today. First was some news that was dropped today. It appears that Nintendo will be dropping a new Nintendo Switch model. And uh, also, I want to talk a little bit about the PlayStation Classic and what games I expect to be on that console. So, first up, the new Nintendo Switch model. According to a Wall Street Journal article that kind of came out today, well, not an article, but uh, just according to the Wall Street Journal, I guess it is an article um, that kind of came out today, saying that Nintendo will be introducing a new version of its popular Switch console next year. The report says that uh, the move comes as Nintendo hopes to boost sales momentum of the Switch. Uh, it says that you know the sales have dropped off since the meteoric launch. It claims that this new model would likely share many features with the current version and be compatible with existing Switch game software. It also says that Nintendo is still debating what new hardware and software features will include uh, to include in the upgrade, with one option on the table being an upgraded screen closer to those found in more recent smartphone LCDs, which would make it brighter, thinner, and more energy efficient. Um, so, yeah, I guess, um, first of all, this should come as a surprise to absolutely no one. Nintendo upgrades their consoles all the time. Um, I mean, they were really kind of, you can go back <laughs> to the day and they were, you know, the, kind of the first ones to do it with the NES. Uh, they had originally all the way back to the NES, they had the NES top loader. And then there's thousands of variations of the Game Boy and, you know, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP, Game Boy Micro. The Super Nintendo had a different version of it. The um, and N64 didn't really, just had kind of color variations. The GameCube, the Wii, uh, there were three different models of it. You had the Wii, then there was the second version of the Wii, which got rid of the GameCube controllers on the top of it. And finally, there was the weird Wii Mini that came out at the end of that console's life cycle. So it, it should be, and then just look at the 3DS. I mean, you have the 3DS, the 3DS XL, the new 3DS, the, the 2DS. So it should come as no surprise that the Switch would be getting upgraded. The interesting thing about it, however, is that with this new version, well, if you want to call it the Switch Pro or the new Nintendo Switch, which is probably what it will actually go with, as a name, um, yeah, the screen being upgraded makes the most sense. As you know, as things become, it it becomes cheaper and cheaper to produce these consoles, right? Because it's now aging technology. I mean, the second it gets produced, it's aging technology. There were three v variations of the PS3. You know that 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 system and those architects architecture with the chipsets become cheaper and cheaper to produce because they're less powerful. And, uh, you know, hyper threading and all of that stuff gets easier. RAM becomes certainly a lot cheaper to produce. So, you know, the Nintendo Switch with this upgraded version, the screen, go, at least going from a, you know, 720 to 1080p screen, which is what I imagine it will be. I mean, my smartphone, for example, I have a Google Pixel 2 and that I think has a uh, 1440p screen. Um, I had a my old phone, which was a Droid Turbo, also had a 1440p screen, and that's, you know, two or three years old. So it should certainly be cheap enough at this point uh, in 2018, if this comes out in 2019, to have a 1080p screen on a seven-inch tablet. Um, so uh, something people are also talking about online. Uh, th so Review Tech USA, who is a YouTuber that I like a lot um he had an inside source that he talked to he there, uh, he did a youtube video on it if you just go look at his channel it sh should be the first one as the time of as the time of this episode gets posted um i like uh richard a lot. i don't know him personally but um you know i he's he's a very 
I consider him a reliable source. So he spoke with an insider and they were saying it could even go up to 512 gigabytes of storage on the device itself. I find that hard to believe. Um, phones don't even have 512 gigabytes of storage uh, on uh, at, the, at this point, um, you know, tablets and things like that. So I would imagine right now the Switch has 32 gigs of internal storage. I would imagine that this new version gets 64 or, you know, 128 or something like that. Something more in line with, you know, the way smartphones are going, the way tablets are going as they come out. Um, it doesn't have to be fast memory. I mean, it's flash memory. So, you know, it's, 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 it's fast already. Um, you could, you could theoretically put more Ram into the, this new Nintendo switch. I kind of, I don't think it's going to be that big of an upgrade. Uh, Rich had also said in his, in his video that, um, this new Nintendo switch could be, something like the PS4 Pro or the Xbox One X, a mid kind of life cycle con um, console that is, you know, meant to kind of bridge the gap because at some point we're going to be having the PS5 come out and the Xbox whatever they're going to decide to call it, the Xbox 2 or the Xbox 5, or no, wait, there's the original Xbox, the Xbox 360, the Xbox One, which is actually the the third Xbox. So maybe they'll call it Xbox Four and just and just you know just trick us all. So the Xbox 420. There we go. That's what they're gonna. That's what they're gonna call it. Um, you know, hey, I mean, their console is green, and uh, apparently, you know, this country is moving green and green by the by the year. So Xbox 420. You heard it here, and um, so you know, as those new consoles creep closer nintendo may be saying okay it's time to upgrade the switch so i i highly doubt they're really going to go more powerful we did see it with the only time nintendo's really done that in terms of actual more power you go back to the n64 well i guess theoretically the nes had like a disk drive add-on but and the 60 the 64 had the ram upgrade and then there was the nintendo disk drive that only had like four six games and all, whatever, um, but it did have that RAM upgrade, which again only worked for a handful of games, like Majora's Mask, uh, Majora's Mask, Donkey Kong. Um, blanking out here, uh, Perfect Dark was another one that required, it. and so it did actually help out some other games, but there's only a handful that really like required it to actually play games. Majora's Mask uh, was one of those. As was Perfect Dark. Well, Perfect Dark, you could play the multiplayer, but you could not play single player without that RAM RAM upgrade. Um, so, also, you have the new Nintendo 3DS. So, the new Nintendo 3DS came out, and I do believe there are only a handful of games, and the only one I can even think of that actually requires that is like required is the Xenoblade Chronicles X Xenoblade Chronicles X for the 3DS is the only game I can think of. I'm sure there are more that require you to have that system to play it. But some games like Hyrule Warriors, uh, Majora's Mask 3DS, the 3D version, as well as Hyrule Warriors, the 3DS version play better on the new, you know, 2DS or the 3DS because one, you have the C stick and two, there is beefier hardware in there, but all of the old games work and I do. And obviously all of your switch games and cartridges, I would imagine moving forward um, will work on this new Nintendo switch. That's just what I'm going to call it. The interesting thing, what I think is interesting is, or the something to think about, I should say is the dock. If, if the dock is going to allow upscaling to say 4k because really this dot the switch runs naturally at 720p on its on its screen and then it is it upscales games in the dock to 1080p when you plug it into your you know tv or whatever i have mine into a monitor so the cool thing would be if you is if you see an upgraded dock as well i don't know if there is a scaling if there is a way to scale your switch up to 4K. Some TVs will can internally do it. If you have a 4K TV, it can take that 1080p signal and scale it upwards 
to 4K. Um, and it is USB-C technology. I don't really understand exactly how all of that works, but I don't know. We, you know, we can see, we we can see. But I, I think that would be something that would be super cool. Is this new Nintendo Switch going to have 4K with the dock? It, I highly doubt it's going to have a, a 4K screen, or I, I doubt it has anything above a 1080p screen. To be completely honest, but it's certainly something to think about. Um, it's it's cool. I'm surprised, honestly, it hasn't happened yet. Nintendo seems to do these revisions pretty regularly. Um, you know, the 3DS is still going. Uh, I'm surprised they haven't just killed that thing off yet. But if it's still making money, then why would you stop? So, okay, so that's just some of my thoughts on the new Nintendo Switch. So, um, okay, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the PlayStation Classic. Okay, so a couple weeks ago, we saw that the PlayStation Classic was announced. Um, it is coming out December 3rd. It's going to have 20 games, and it's going to retail for $99.99 in the United States. Um, it we, had, we saw a little trailer, and it showed a handful of games. It's, supposed to, it's going to have 20 games, but we already know five of them. It has Final Fantasy VII, Tekken 3, Wild Arms... Uh, Jumping Flash and Ridge Racer 4. So those are the games that we know are on it. And I'll get to my kind of prediction list here in a bit. I just want to talk a little bit about, more about the system. This is from the kind of the PlayStation blog website. Available for pre-order at select retailers across the U.S. and Canada, each unit will also come with an HDMI cable to connect their TV, a USB cable, and two controllers for local multi multiplayer with compatible files or with compatible titles. PlayStation Classic will be available for $99 US, $129 Canada on December 3rd, 2018. A historic date for all of us at PlayStation. Visit PlayStation.com for more details. Yeah, yeah. Um, the mini console is approximately 45% smaller than the original PlayStation and it emulates the original's look and feel by featuring similar controllers and packaging. Longtime fans will appreciate the nostalgia that comes with rediscovering the games they know and love, while gamers who might be new to the platform can enjoy groundbreaking PlayStation console experience that started it all. All of the preloaded games will be playable in their original format. So it does look quite cool. I do have to say it is a mini PlayStation 1, I believe, you know, you have power, reset, and the eject button you can press, I believe, and that'll kind of take you back to a menu so you can pick um, through different games. And it does it does look like the original PlayStation, the bigger, thick, gray one, which I've always really liked. I've always really liked that console. I really like the way it looks. Um, I had one of those, and it died, and then I got the little white one, the little white PS1, which I actually still have today. And I still love. And, I mean, the PlayStation 1 was just, you know, it was a time we are just entering 3D gaming. And I have so many memories of, you know, PS1 gaming. There are rumors uh, that Nintendo could be releasing a, <coughs> excuse me, N64, you know, N N60, N64 Mini. You know, they've done the NES and the SNES. Uh, and it would be great to see that come out this holiday as well to kind of rival the PlayStation. That would be that would be great. And perhaps someday Sega will release a uh, Sega Saturn. That would be great as well. So, okay. So now I just kind of want to talk about the games list. So the games we already know, Final Fantasy VII. Obviously, this game is a staple um, of, of the PS1. And I think, you know, it's great that it's on here. It also is... Good to know that there's going to be multi-disc games um, on there. So I think that should theoretically open the door to more, you know, RPGs. Because um, Wild Arms is a one-disc game, and I'll get to Wild Arms in a second. But Final Fantasy VII being on the on the PlayStation Classic makes so much sense. Um, if this wasn't on here, it'd be, I think, a really tough sell because I think that regardless of whether you think this game is the best Final Fantasy or you don't like it at all or, you know, it hasn't aged well, it is, it is, you know, it was a huge selling game for the PS1 and I think it is certainly one of the most iconic games on the system. And one thing real quick before, um, so I want to get through the, the five games that we know, but 
I do want to mention really quick that the controllers are the original PlayStation controllers, the gray ones that do not have analog. So that actually should drastically change some of the games that I'll get to um, that I think I think are kind of misses that should be on this system that aren't. So um, another, so number two, I have uh, Jumping Flash. That is again these first five are the games that are on the system. Jumping Flash is this really quirky um, platforming kind of first person plat in a way flat platforming game that is on the PlayStation. I have never played it, but if you look at the, if you, I mean, it just screams that era. You know, like kind of bright. We have all these bright 3D polygons and uh, just quirky games, and I think it's going to be cool for a lot of people to play it. And I think it also sh should says a lot about what is actually going to be on this system, because the fact that they're showing this in their initial trailer, I think it means there could be some quite obscure games on on the PS1. You know, when you look at the NES and the SNES Classic, most of those games are first-party games, first-party Nintendo games. And they're, they're mostly the games you expect. There's not really that many games that I wouldn't expect on those. So there might be some quirkier kind of titles here on on the PS on the on the PS Classic. Ridge Racer 4, uh that's great. I don't know cuz I didn't play it really back in the day. If it was, an, I mean, I'm sure it supported analog, but I don't know how well it would play without the analog sticks. But it is one of two Namco games that are on the that are in the initial five, the initial initial five games shown. So um, it's definitely great to be getting a Ridge Racer game and a racing game. I do expect actually that to be quite a few racing games. Tekken Three. That is a total. I don't want to say gem for the PS1, but it's by far probably the best fighting game on the PS1. I prefer Bloody Roar, which I actually do not believe will make it on here. I would love it, but I just I don't I don't see it happening. But Tekken 3, I mean, the Tekken series is a long-running series. It's obviously great to have a Tekken game on here, 3D fighting. You know, as we moved from like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat in the SNES era to now we're getting yeah, that's kind of the cool thing about these mini consoles is that we're getting you're kind of seeing games progress and it's it's just cool and so I'm I'm glad there's a Tekken game. Uh, Wild Arms is the fifth game that we we saw. Uh, Wild Arms is a great franchise. I God, we haven't had a Wild Arms game Wild Arms game in so long. This RPG again, it's not a hidden gem, but I think it. I think it. I mean for. I think the market of people that are going to be buying this, because um, I remember when the NES Classic launched, I was going on Facebook, and a lot of people who are not video game fans at all, or you know, they, they played when they were kids, were going nuts over the NES Classic and the SNES Classic, and same thing. People who, you know, I don't remember ever talking about video games, but obviously they played them when they were kids, were posting the PlayStation Classic. Oh, they were sharing it on their Facebook page. So maybe you know, in a weird way, kind of like the Wii, the, these classic consoles bring kind of people back into gaming. And so hopefully something comes out of it. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know, maybe it gets more people talking about wild arms because wild arms is a great, just watch the opening cinematic. Uh, it is a great RPG on the PS one. It's kind of weird. Actually, it, it, uh, obviously it's a Western game. If you're not familiar with it, it's, Western and air quotes, um, like your guy still has like a sword and stuff like that, but it's 2D. Well, yeah, kind of 2D sprites, but then the battles are 3D, so kind of cool. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna get to my prediction. So obviously, 15 more games I want to talk about a little bit, and this list is not a this is not a best of PlayStation list. This is not the games that I think that are best. This is not the list of games that I think, um, you know, like define the PS1. This is what I believe will be on the system. I picked 15 games that I actually believe will be on this thing um, for a lot of reasons, uh, you know, probably like good relationships with the publishers. They're not, you know, the kind of like lost IPs, right? Like the developers don't really exist anymore. So I think they're easy. A lot of these are also on the PlayStation Store. 
So I think that's kind of like an easy just port from like, you know, you can go to the PS store for the, you have a PS3 or PSP and just kind of download digital files of these games. So a lot of these are on there and, um, there, and then I'll get to, when you get to the end, I'll talk about some, you know, some hidden gem or not some hidden gems, some honorable mentions, things that I don't think, you know, are on this, will be on this thing because of the lack of analog. And, uh, one real quick is, uh, Ape Escape. Ape Escape, I, I think, is, I'm pretty sure is, is a is a Sony property, and it's I know I I it, you can't play it without the analog. So um, yeah, so this is just what I think will be on here. This isn't my wish list or anything like that. So just before we start, I wanted to get that in. So okay, so my I guess sixth game here, the one that I think will be on there without question and defines the PS One 100 percent is. Metal Gear Solid, obviously one of my favorite video game franchises, Metal Gear Solid. Um, it would be hard to sell this thing without Metal Gear Solid. It's probably the best game on the system. Certainly one of the, I would say it's top 10 most recognizable games of the system. I mean, I think Final Fantasy VII, um, a game we'll get to later and Metal Gear Solid. I think if you had to pick like three or four games that just defined the PlayStation, Metal Gear Solid has to be one of those. I mean, I could go on and on about how great this game is, but it's so synonymous with Sony and I mean, it's Metal Gear Solid. It's, it's, it has, to, it has to be on there, but I will say one thing that's going to be interesting is if Metal Gear Solid is on there, there's obviously a part in the game where you're supposed to look at the back of the CD console or the CD case to figure out what, you know, you have your codec conversations, how to figure out how to get past the part. You're supposed to contact Merrill, I believe, um, and, you know, you're supposed to use your CD case. So I don't know if we're going to get, like, digital pamphlets of everything. Sony is a company that likes to push hardware as far as they possibly can. If you look at any time they've released a console, they they typically try to push hardware above and beyond. So, you know, I Sony Sony doesn't really skimp when they kind of do first party stuff. They're they're all about it. So I imagine actually this PlayStation Classic to be, you know, a nostalgia machine. So I mean, maybe we'll be able to, you know, see the CD cases and you know every everything like that. So, okay. So um, I guess number seven on my list of 20 games is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So this game is coming to PS4, it and Rondo of Blood. But again, another kind of staple PS4 game. And most of these games, I think, kind of are staple, or excuse me, PS1 game. Most of these are kind of staple PS1 games, and that's why I have them on the list. I think this is kind of, you know, what will actually be on this console. But Castlevania Symphony of the Night, you know, Metroidvania, you know, that 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 type of that type of game. I mean, this is really the, the when you think of Metroidvania, you know, the Vania part, this is really the game you kind of think about. I mean, it's it's a classic. Um, you know, that's everyone always, always talks about it as, you know, is it the best Castlevania game? I mean, probably it in Castlevania three. Um and great music of it's a not I wouldn't say it's super hard game but uh, you do kind of have to beat it and then you have to do it again so yeah it's it's also and why I think it'll be on here it's just um you know Konami it seems like they're not they're really into milking their existing IPs as much as they can for all sorts of weird things just go look at Metal Gear Survive so <laughs> I mean I, a port for them of something that's probably super easy to do, you know, I'm sure they would they would sign off of. So, okay, number eight. Parappa the Rappa, you know, a Sony title. And, uh, again, this is – it's a quirky game. It's kind of weird. It is a rhythm game, but it's just another one of those – I mean, all you have to do is look at the cover art, and it just screams 90s. It just, you know – it, it, I, I remember playing it on a bunch of demo discs back in the day when I first got my my PlayStation. Um, it has been ported to the PSP, and I think actually there was a PS4 port. So um, again, it's just another game that I, I I just you know is it is it of the t we know we're getting twenty games. Is it one of the ones I want? 
No, not necessarily, but it is definitely one of the games I think that will be on there. It's also the first rhythm game I remember playing. Obviously, now we think about Guitar Hero and Rock Band, and I'm sure there were rhythm games before this, but uh, this is definitely the first one I remember playing. I think there's a sequel. I don't know how good it is, but um, I definitely remember playing this way back in the day and uh, you know, just adding in all sorts of little like rapping lines. Not that I really like rap but uh just because i thought it was cool so um yeah i i I think it's it's highly likely that that game will be on here okay number nine meta evil um i do this is actually getting a ps4 remaster and two other games that i will be talking about are getting kind of newer remasters um but meta evil you know, you're this, I, I forget his name, but you know, you're the skeleton guy who was a knight back in the day. And it's, it's a 3d kind of platformer, I guess it was, you know, in that, in that era when everything needed to be 3d polygonal platformers. But, uh, again, it's just, it's synonymous with the PlayStation. When I think of the PS one, I think, I think of that. Um, and it's good. I mean, none of these, none of the games I'm going to list off here are bad games, because uh, trust me, there were a lot of bad <laughs> games for the for the PS One or and the N sixty four. That era when we said, "Hey, we're going to move from two D into three D." A lot of like budget plat budget three D platformers were just bad, and they just didn't work. You know, I'm looking at you, Gex the Gecko. But uh, yeah, so Medieval again, highly likely to be on here. Okay, um, number ten. Okay, so I had to choose between this and its sequel, and there's a couple other games where I had to choose between its and its sequel, but if I had to pick, I would say that Tony Hawk Pro Skater, the original, will be the game that gets chosen. I don't think we're going to get a lot of games that are, like, the same in their series. Like, on the NES Classic, I think you get, like, Mario 1, 2, and 3. So I don't think we're going to get like Tony Hawk Pro Skater and Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, and there's only 20 games. But I think the original Tony Hawk Pro Skater, because that's probably the one that everyone bought, that's probably the one everyone remembers playing. Now, this is kind of weird because as you start to move into this realm, you know, you have licensed music. So that kind of comes into play and what games we will end up getting because once you start dealing with licensed music, um, you know, you're not just dealing with just the game developers, you know, you have to, I don't know how all that royalty business works, but I mean, Tony Hawk pro skater, one of the best games on the, on the PS one, I think kind of, I think it was a game changing game, you know, not to sound redundant there, but I, I think it changed the video game industry because, you know, you could not obviously do something like this in 2d graphics. I mean, yes, there was like skate or die. Um, and there's obviously like, Game Boy Advance versions, but I mean, Tony Hawk Pro Skater was, you know, it was a groundbreaking game. It, you know, I mean, I would certainly never played anything like it. Um, you know, it, it put extreme sports and kind of air quotes there kind of kind of on the map, really. Um, you know, it was edgy. It totally fit the time. It had cool music, cool stages. Um, back when the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series was good. I mean, this was the first one in in the series, and what a game to launch a franchise on. I know it's been pretty terrible as of late, but when you go back to the glory days, you know, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1, I'd say, you know, 1, 2, up until about American Wasteland, and then that's when it really started to go downhill, uh, downhill jam <laughs> uh, included there. But, yeah, so I highly expect Tony Hawk Pro Skater to be on this list. Number 11, this one's super easy, Crash Bandicoot. I do know we have the the Crash kind of remastered. And this one was kind of tough between, you know, you have Crash 1, 2, and 3, and um, Crash uh, Team Racing. And so I know I kind of said earlier that we may not get two, but if I did have to think we would get two of something... I am also going to go with Crash Team Racing. This is the only two I see in the same kind of series being on here, so I'm just going to talk about them both a little bit. Crash Team Racing is a highly underrated kart racer because at the time everyone was playing Mario Kart 64, but Crash Team Racing is 
very good. Um, it was on the PS1, so obviously, you know, I, it's technically superior to Mario Kart. And to be honest, I know that I have talked about Mario Kart 64 quite a bit on this podcast. Um, I think that there are a handful of better sp- kart racers, let alone racers of the generation, than Mario Kart 64. And Crash Team Racing is one of those. But Crash Bandicoot also... I mean, has to be on this thing. I mean, that is like one of the most synonymous PlayStation games. That was what everyone was viewing as PlayStation's kind of mascot back when you needed a, you know, like kind of, you know, anthropomorphic animal. Animal, You know, Sega had Sonic and, you know, PlayStation kind of had Crash and you know, obviously Mario ha- or Nintendo had Mario. I mean, not that Mario's an animal, but, you know, you, you kind of have these mascots. And that's who everyone was viewing as Sony's mascot back in the day. So Crash Bandicoot and Crash Team Racing are the two that I see, you know, of the same series that are going to be on there. Okay, so now I have two games that are kind of... Uh, a genre that kind of started, or at least for me, kind of started around this area, the N64 and the PlayStation, that is the survival horror games. I know there are other games kind of in that similar vein, but um, I'm going to go ahead and start with, and I picked this one for a handful of reasons, Resident Evil 2. The reason I picked Resident Evil 2 is, at this point, I think everyone looks at the original Resident Evil. I mean, if you go back and look at the original Resident Evil, I kind of like forget that it exists because of, you know, the GameCube remake and now it's been remastered and things like that. When I want to, if I want to play the original Resident, if I want to play Resident Evil, that's what I'm playing. I'm playing the remade version. The original one is actually kind of weird and wonky and it's also not really scary. I think it was scary back in the day because, you know, it was. It was new, but, uh, I mean, between the two, Resident Evil 2 is the far superior game. Um, the, the originals, I mean, we'll find, I mean, now you now we do have the Resident Evil 2 remake coming out. I believe it's releasing in early next year, so you kind of, if you were to have Resident Evil 2, that could get people excited for the Resident Evil 2 remake. And if I'm Capcom and Sony comes to me and says, hey, we want to, use a Resident Evil game for this this console, I would say Resident Evil 2 because we're going to release the remake for it in about a month, so that's going to get more people excited, want to buy the Resident Evil 2 um, remaster that's coming out on, on PS4. So, And Resident Evil 2 is also far scarier than the original. So if I had to pick a Resident Evil game, I think I would pick Resident Evil 2 over Resident Evil 1 to be on the PlayStation Classic. Okay, so the other kind of survival horror game is Silent Hill. You know, back back in this day, it seems like somebody would have a hit, and we would init- and we would immediately see somebody try to copy or jump on that bandwagon. You go back to the early '90s, and you had you know Mario and Sonic, and then it seemed like everyone was coming out with like this kind of cutesy kind of you know, mascot that they could just give a little bit of toot to. There was like, you know, Arrow Arrow the Acrobat and, you know, Busby. So that's just kind of the way, you know, I mean, we also see that in in lots of things today. But I would not say that Silent Hill is kind of a cheap imitation of Resident Evil. Silent Hill was really good. The original Silent Hill, um, the way it used fog on the PlayStation 1 really gave this town that kind of creepy, you know, atmosphere. And, you know, it's competitor, Resident Evil. You know, you're like, you know, like you're a cop and you're, you know, walking through this. It's just this mansion. And then the second one, you're kind of in Raccoon City. Um, and, and you know, that's kind of great. But Silent Hill was different. Silent Hill wasn't really like it was it, it, Silent Hill was less about like, oh, just kind of like jump out, scare zombies. And Silent Hill also had this kind of air of mystery about it. And that, um, I think, really, you know, that's what really made Silent Hill great. Now, there is a remake of it. Uh, I believe it was on like the Wii and uh, maybe the PS3. I got a PS3 port. I can't remember. But um, those are great. But I, if I had to pick, I would say the original Silent Hill is that other kind of survival horror game on the PS1. 
Um, so now I'm going to get into, oh, God, I, if I had to, I think there's going to be a handful of racing, racing or car based games on this system. So we already have Ridge Racer. Um, another one, which is kind of a no brainer is, you know, it's a Sony property, easy to port Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo is that, you know, Ridge Racer is that arcadey kind of racing game. Gran Turismo is that simulation kind of this is when we're kind of starting to get into like you know what you think today of like forza because gran turismo hasn't really been what it is but this, you know like cartooning kind of like sports simulation game you know back in the like kind of late 90s early 2000s when everyone thought it was cool to put spoilers on their car and like neon lights not that gran turismo really did that um that was like kind of need for speed later on but gran turismo um you know it, for starters, it played so well. I mean, it ran so smooth. Um, and you were buying kind of like regular cars was kind of what made it cool. You, you, I mean, you know, like they were still like sporty cars, but they, you know, it wasn't just like all race cars. You know, you're buying like a Toyota Supra and then you're like buying parts for it and kind of souping it up. And I think that was also kind of the appeal to it. We see that today, obviously, with Forza and with, you know, Gran Turismo still today and other racing kind of franchises have grown from that. But I think, you know, Gran Turismo to me at least was the first game that really kind of started that. And I mean, it's synonymous with the PlayStation. So again, this list is a, what do I think is going to be on the, on the PlayStation classic? So, okay. So Gran Turismo, um, driver, <sighs> I was torn between Driver and Driver 2. I really, really was. But uh, I would. I think they're going to go with Driver 1 because Driver 1 is, is kind of regarded as the better game. Driver 1 really, to me, you know, you have Driver 1 and then Driver 2. And if you look at Driver 2 and then GTA a year later, you could almost point and say, man, Driver really kind of built GTA. But, uh, you know, GTA was kind of doing it in a 2D kind of sense but driver one to me um that's again it's just it was kind of a technical you know marvel at the time actually i mean it really kind of pushed the playstation to its limits it it had really good gameplay um i think it really kind of showcased exactly what the what the ps1 could do um and if you were if you were th playing like super nintendo and genesis and you know you hear the, the playstation coming out had driver been a game early in its cycle rather than late i think it would kind of kind of blown your mind like oh my gosh this is like this is what the next step in in consoles and video games is going to be um, so driver, you know, you're playing, you're kind of doing these car based missions, which was kind of cool. You know, you, you know, you're like chasing people down and like tailing people. And, you know, there are a lot of cool modes. You have like the survival mode where, you know, your car had this kind of damage meter. Um, and obviously once your car's damage meter went up, you know, you'd get, you know, that's kind of like the end, but you also have kind of that felony meter. Um, so, you know, like if you were to, you know, if you just blow through an intersection, a cop's going to chase you. And then that was, you know, that was a lot of, that was a lot of the fun. So, um, driver, you know, it started a kind of a series of games that, that had a lot of promise, but kind of, you know, had its, had its ups, ups and downs. Um, another racing game, Wipeout 2097, you know, um, I just, I, I'm not super big into the Wipeout series, and we it hasn't been said yet whether the PAL and kind of like Japanese areas um, or, you know, like Europe and Japanese areas are if they will have different games on the PlayStation list. If they do, then that will kind of change my list a little bit because I do believe the SNES and NES Classic had a few different games based upon North America and um, Japan. So I if that is the case then this game might not be in the north american version cuz i i don't think it did as well in north america i'm not 100% sure about that um, don't quote me on that but if it's not then i really expect this game to be on here cuz I, I i um i think this game did quite well in europe and japan and uh i i think it i think it's just going to be on there um all right the last kind of car kind of based game is twisted metal Two, you know, there's a handful of Twisted Metal games, 
But I think that the second one, if I had to pick, would be the one that kind of gets on gets on the list. Um, because the second one, you know, I think uh, for a lot of games, a lot of I mean, a lot of times we see this a lot in general with sequels, right? In video games, sequels usually are the better game because a lot of a lot of video games are new ideas. So when you have that first idea, this the sequel comes out and you know it's been expanded upon, it's been ex- improved upon. And I think that was Twisted Metal 2. You kind of had this car demolition game with, you know, like you know, like there's like Axel, I think is his name, with the guy who's like got the wheels around him. And uh, <clears throat> you know, obviously Sweet Tooth and it definitely was like a 90s you know, ty- type of game. It definitely had a lot of toot. And I mean, again, Twisted Metal is synonymous with the PlayStation and the PS1. And so I think we're going to get a PS1 game. So, um, okay. I have only two games left, left, and both of them are platformers. So another game I talked about is getting a remaster, and that is the Spyro series. I think it's just a no-brainer that Spyro the Dragon will be on the PlayStation 1 Classic. Um, Again, you know, I've used this word a lot, synonymous. It's synonymous with the PlayStation. I didn't really play it. It's not my kind of a game, but I think for marketing reasons and, you know, you only have 20 games. You got to go with kind of like the big hits, Spyro the Dragon. So, and last but not least... Tomb Raider 2. Tomb Raider 2, uh, that is a game I played so, so much on the PlayStation. I think it's way better of a game than the first one. Um, You know, you you start off and, you know, you get to run around Laura's house and kind of train. You go to Venice. You have the, I I can't remember the the level, but you're you're swimming and you've got like harpoons. You've got to watch out for sharks and you get, you know, you can get into boats and and kind of race. I can't remember if there was a four wheeler in this game or if there was, it was Tomb Raider 3. But, um, you know, it was a kind of a big game, you know, uh, like um, I actually tried playing it the other day and good God, the (laughs) can controls are so hard to go back to they're so difficult to go back to you really had to like line up your jumps exactly right and then you would miss them and it is just so so hard to do like going back to this when you you know you don't have like your two analogs to control and everything is kind of squared um but there are so many secrets in this game exploring the world that they had kind of crafted there it was it's it's great. I mean, I would say Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider Two to me is probably a top ten PS One game. Um, it just it was at the time. Again, it shows the power that the PlayStation had. Um, I think that's you know a lot of the reason that a lot of these games weren't on the N sixty four because the N sixty four sold well enough. I just think people just didn't want to develop for it because you didn't have that all that memory. I mean, these were big games for the time. Tomb Raider 2 was definitely a big game. So, okay. All right. Well, that is my list. Um, So I guess I'm just going to kind of talk about some honorable mentions. Games that I just, I don't think we're going to get. I would love to. But again, if there's only 20 games, you've got to kind of weed it down to kind of like what I call the, the big hits. So, um, you know, Bloody Roar, that is a fighting game I love and love and love. You know, you turn into your beasts and, you know, kind of fight each other. I just I just think that with Tekken 3, I just don't think we're going to get two 3D fighters when you only have tw- 20 games is not really that many, that many games. So you've really got to we- weed it down. So another one that I cut off that could come back to bite me, it, it, it almost made it. Um, I was debating between this and driver and that is siphon filter sony owns i think it is their property siphon filter but uh you know i just with metal gear i think metal gear solid has to be on this thing i think 100 percent metal gear solid has to be on this thing and then again it comes down to 20 games are you going to have metal gear solid and siphon filter i don't know if siphon filter sold nearly as well as metal as metal gear solid so um, toss that one out. I had to talk, it was a toss up between Tony Hawk pro skater one and two. 
I really don't think we're gonna get we're gonna get two of those. Um, I don't think we're gonna get any more RPGs. Actually, I think we already have Final Fantasy VII and Wild Arms. Um, I mean, I would love like Final Fantasy Tactics, Final Fantasy IX, Suikoden, but uh, I don't know though. RPGs are kind of the PlayStation's bread and butter, so it is possible that we could get more. But I, I just kind of find it highly unlikely. Ace Combat, maybe. Um, you know, there's I'm just trying to think about some of the games I own. Uh, Monster Rancher. I don't think we're getting any professional wrestling games, unfortunately. Although, if I were Nintendo and I were releasing N64 Classic, I would do everything in my power to get WWF No Mercy on that thing. Um, and GoldenEye. I mean, you can't have an N64 Classic without GoldenEye. Um, first person shooters. There were some first person shooters for the PS1, I think, uh, Medal of Honor, but they just were not very good on on the PS1. It just didn't really have good first person shooters. Um, there was like the Street Fighter EXE games. There was Mega Man Legends. That is, or any Mega Man game, actually could be something that gets on this list but uh kind of find it hard um that was where i struggled when i made this list i just wanted the hits so um all right i think that's about enough of that so all right guys thank you so much for listening um as i said i'm kind of moved in settled in here um, I've got some podcasts planned uh with thomas it's been a long time since since I podcasted with Thomas, um, our buddy Tim, he had joined us on a few. Um, probably get him back on here. Tiffany is going back to work, kind of figuring out her schedule now that she's had her baby. So, uh, and I got some other kind of special guests planned. Who knows? Maybe it could turn into some more things. So, um, I just want to thank you guys so much for sticking with me as I've been kind of in this hiatus. And, um, you know, I've done these past two podcasts by myself. I know I've been on some other shows, uh, the switch RPG guys, um, I've podcasted with them. I want to give a, a huge shout out and thanks to them. Uh, people have been following me on Twitter. I know I've got a lot of other projects going on, but, uh, I've got a lot of content coming. I've been, I've kind of taken this time and in, in this kind of hiatus to actually go back and play some games, kind of go back and actually like play games because before I was just so busy where I was just like, you know, I do other projects, you know, bend the knee, my game of Thrones podcast, just it's so much time and, and work and, uh, you know, just work and, you know, working out and just life stuff. And, you know, so I just want to give you guys a huge thank you for sticking with me and, uh, sticking with the show over uh, all this time. So, um, let me know, uh, send me a, so hit me up on the Facebook page. Let me know what you guys want me to talk about, what you guys want me to do. I'm, uh, been doing some behind the scene works on the Twitch channel, getting that ready to go and, uh, more music covers. So whatever you guys want, just kind of let me know and I can kind of gear the podcast that way. So, um, as always, thanks for 